With the new season of anime almost about, many of us will have to go about picking what is and isn't worth watching. And it's common that you may feel overwhelmed taking a look at all these new shows and the articles or anitubers don't tell you the really important information you need to know when diving into seasonal anime. But have no fear, this is why I've compiled the actual seasonal guide every fan needs to know. Now the first thing you'll want to do is ignore the seasonal charts and get yourself a My Anime List, Kitsu or Annie List account. These are very useful free sites where the main functionality is being able to accurately track your self-loathing by seeing how many full days you wasted watching anime. Jesus fucking Christ, what am I doing with my life? And also track the anime you've watched as well as a side function. It's still a very important step however, as that small high you get from marking your show as completed is the only gratification you'll ever get from realising you've just wasted 4 hours watching 12 episodes of kawaii high school girl bullshit again. Getting to the actual season now, the most important period for any anime season is the first 3-4 to four weeks. This is what I like to call the gold rush period, everyone's watching everything, anything could be hyped and every wanker around you is in a race to find the next gem of the season. This is the time when you can go absolutely mental with the shows you watch while being overly enthusiastic. Just make sure you try to support the industry as much as you can. You can do this by watching shows on sites like Crunchyroll, Funimation and Daisuke when they are picked up by them. But recently Netflix and Amazon's Anime Strike have been picking up shows as well. So if there's a show that's been picked up by them that you want to watch then... <sighs> Fucking kill me. The first question you may ask yourself is what new shows should I pick up in this gold rush? And the correct answer is actually all of them. Before guys could impress girls by bragging about their careers or academic achievements, but these days you can do pretty much the same thing by showing off the size of your currently watching list. Uh, if they're not impressed by that however, then you can really step it up with that endless pit that never seems to stop growing and just whip out your plan to watch list. After the gold rush period we've reached the important 3 episode rule. By this point you should have gotten enough of a feel of a show to be able to decide whether it's for you or not and you can actually tell a lot about the show and yourself as well by the episode you drop it at. If you drop a show at episode 1, it means the show is really bad. Drop at episode 2 and the show isn't going anywhere. At episode 3 is a standard cutoff and dropping past episode 4 then you're just a filthy weak casual with commitment issues. You may find that you pass this 3 episode point with 20 hours worth of shows you want to keep up with per week, where you're having trouble finding the time to keep up with them all and it's starting to affect your work or school. So you have to choose between anime or life commitments. And it's at this point you need to ask yourself a very important question. Do I really have the time every week to let these stupid little things ruin in my life schedule and once you do you can properly figure out okay how many days of work and lectures can I be late for this week? If for whatever reason however you can't find the time to keep up with the show but don't want to drop it, a useful scheduling technique I've found really effective is by putting that show on hold and forgetting to ever get back to it. Once you've followed enough anime seasons you may start to notice some common themes so let's go over some of these. Keep in mind that not all of these are mutually exclusive and a lot of shows can fit into several of these categories. The most obvious one is the hype show every season which is also often called the hype train. It's called the hype train because once you get on the train stops you and everyone else from talking about any other show until the train is over. You really see this effect kick in about 6 weeks in when everyone's watching something new, it's too early to discuss the upcoming season and nobody in their right minds wants to talk to you about Kato the right answer. It's quite often that such a show is hailed as the saviour of anime as thousands of fans proclaim that anime is saved for the 7th billion time. And you may wonder what constitutes a saving anime in the first place or what anime even needs saving from. It's the Nazis. Sometimes you may be looking at a list of new animes and come across a show where you end up thinking, what the hell? Did someone accidentally put their synopsis as the show title? Uh, that's actually called a light novel adaptation. Light novels can be about anything, limited only by the things that an author can imagine. And that's the great thing about knowing it's a light novel adaptation. It's knowing that the story is definitely going to be set in a fancy world or have a little sister in it. You may think that these will be the most important shows of the season, but this isn't actually right. As you start hanging around the community you'll notice that anime fans have evolved their own method of communication through pictures of cute little anime girls. This is why the important thing to look out for is that one girl every season who you can stock up piles of reaction shots for use when interacting with other anime fans, as the only other communication method that's proven to be as effective is Jojo memes. Once you've gotten into the groove of things, one day you may find yourself watching a show and noticing that you've grown attached to the characteristics of a single female character, and this is a very important moment in your life. So hold it dearly because 
You've just been drafted into a war. Nobody really knows how the best girl war started. Nobody really knows how the war will end. And nobody really knows who wins or loses. But in the end, it's not about winning or losing. It's about salt. Remember that you are a soldier on the front lines defending your girl from shitty opinions. And if you don't do it, who will? There's no reason we can't be civil with these exchanges though. Humans are tribal beings and we can still be understanding even in disagreement. For example, I once met a guy who claimed that Cinderays are the cancer of this earth. So I, being the open and civil human being that I am, reply by calling him a cunt. There are several ways to support a character you like. One day, you may just retweet a gif that you like, and the next thing you know, you're writing a 10-page essay on why episode 12 of Bakumonogatari proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that Senja Gahara is the gem that we men do not yet deserve in this world. Hypothetically speaking. But what I do also like to do is buy figurines, because that slight high you get when you complete a purchase is just big enough to drown out that nagging voice in the back of your mind telling you that she'll never be real. There are, however, some girls who you should never defend under any circumstances. Girls like Sengoku from the Monogatari franchise, Ochinjin Girl from Erumanga Sensei, and Umaru-chan. But Gigak, what happens if I'm really attached to a character like Umaru? What does that mean? Well, unfortunately, that means you have a disease called shit taste, and there is no known cure. If you're new to this, you'll probably come across a sequel that a lot of people are excited about, and you haven't heard of it, or you haven't watched it. Have no fear, as even if the original show was popular as balls and was the hype train of its time, this will not necessarily apply to the sequels. This is known in anime as the law of conservation of hype, stating that more hype cannot be created past the first season, and entropy will cause it to dissipate as the season increases in iterations. One important thing to keep in mind is that watching past seasons to catch up will just eat up more time that you could be spending watching other shows now. So choose which ones you commit to carefully. For example, I've heard really good things about recreators this season, but I couldn't be bothered to watch ReZero, ReLife, ReWrite, ReGutsu No Line, and you're Re on ice to catch up, so I just settled on listening to Re Re by Asian Kung Fu Generation. Of course, there will inevitably be a few shows nowadays that are targeted towards the elusive female anime fans. And while you can normally recognize these a mile away by looking for fabulously dressed groups of nippleless men with abs you can grate cheese off of, I found these come in three basic categories classy guys doing classy things, sporty guys doing sporty things, and ambiguously homoerotic guys doing ambiguously homoerotic things homoerotically. The shows don't always have an undertone of homoeroticism around them, so you just have to look for different levels of signs. The most basic level, for example, is if two guys make eye contact with each other, then they're bumming each other in the locker room. Obviously. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the Super Titty High School Fight Club. This pretty much speaks for itself, as the main reason anyone would watch these shows is because of the plot. Plot is a term used within the community to define the overexposure of female body parts in a sexualized way, and is also occasionally used to describe the writing and story of an anime. Every so often, though, you'll glance at the chart and see something you won't believe at first. You'll think it's an anomaly, a mistake by the site, so you'll refresh the page and look for other sources just to confirm the information that's been presented. And as you slowly realize it's true, a bead of sweat will drop down. Your eyes widen, your heart starts racing as it dawns on you. The Mad Men, they did it. They actually fucking did it. This show's gonna be running for more than 13 episodes! And that's pretty much everything you need to know about getting into seasonal anime. You may be listening to this guide wondering why you'd ever want to get involved in seasonal anime in the first place. I mean, it just sounds like a massive time sponge. But trust me when I say it's all worth it for that satisfying feeling when you finish all your shows, mark them all as completed, and as you're ready to discuss everything you've just watched, you realize everyone's already moved on to the next season. guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much this month to Patrick Madsen, Thrones Melt, Jared Gattel, Gabe Brown, Vincent Mooney, Lao Ken, and everyone else on Patreon for helping to support me for this month and making this video possible. If all goes as planned, this video should be out while I'm at AX, so I don't have any real updates right now. Yeah, that didn't work. I was way too busy at the con. But if you did want the Anime's Trash shirt and the Tournament Arc shirt, those are still on sale and link below if you still want to get them. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy Anime Expo right now, which I am hopefully doing at this very moment because this is all pre-recorded so yeah you better be having fun future me i had the time of my life thank you past giguk